Acts chapter 7. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? Stephen, these lies, are they true? And he said to Stephen, Men, brethren, and fathers, fathers of the, ten, the elders, those of the, those of the nation, notice how he, even still he treats them with respect. Christians do not do that with the elders of this nation, no matter who they are. They're still elders. The God of glory appeared unto our fathers, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charon, which would be Aaron, Genesis 11. Stephen is going to go through the entire history of the nation of Israel, as we see in the Old Testament. Stephen is well versed in history. Many today don't even know church history. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Now, Stephen's got a great message here. The priests and all that, like, yeah, all right, yeah, that's us. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Praise the Lord, Stephen. Amen. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Cairo. And from thence, when, it, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land, where in year now dwell Israel. Amen, Stephen. Right. Okay. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much to set his face on it. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's true. Abraham did not get the land. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a procession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. Oh, amen. Okay. Glory to God. And God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land Ew. and that they should bring them into bondage Ew. and then treat them evil 400 years. Oh. We don't need to talk about that, Stephen. That's not good. Notice how Stephen's going from Genesis. We haven't reached Exodus yet, but he's, he's saying everything that's happened so far in Genesis. We're going to go through the books of the Bible, the Old Testament, through Stephen, in his proper order. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, say God. Yeah, all right. Yeah, those, those Egyptians. God did get them. Yeah, right. After that, they should come forth and serve me in this place. Yeah, right. Good going, Steve. Yeah. And he gave them the covenant of search and circumcision. Ouch. Yeah, okay. And so Abraham begat Isaac, no Ishmael. And circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. No Esau, no Ishmael. Bad boy Stephen. Well, imagine that, not including those two wicked, perverse boys of the the patriots. He did not mention the sinners cast out by God. Stephen, bad boy. Stephen, good Bible man. He doesn't give men that don't deserve a charge any charge. And the patriots moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. Uh, what are you gonna mention that for? But God was with him. Oh, yeah, okay. You see the ups and downs of Stephen's message? Yay! Oh, yay! And delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. We're still in Genesis. Yay! Now came a dearth over the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction. And our fathers found no substance. Oh, that was a trying time. Ugh. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first, the ten brothers. Not the eleven, the ten. Remember, he kept Benjamin behind. So St Stephen knows the history. At the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, 
and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. All right. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our father. Oh, okay. We didn't die, and they died not in the land. They died in a place where God never really wanted them. Oh. Um, and were carried over into Shechem and laid in a sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Shechem. That's recorded in Genesis. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, all right, Stephen, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Yeah! They multiplied during persecution. As the church will multiply in persecution. Now we've entered the book of Exodus. We finished Genesis. Exodus. Till another king rose which knew not Joseph. The same dwelt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. Oh, yeah, that part of our history. In which time Moses was born, was exceedingly fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. Yeah, Moses, all right. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Yeah, all right, Moses. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. Really? He told God, I'm not elegant of speech. Moses was a liar. But we're all sinners. And when he had when he was full forty years old, it came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one suffered wrong, he defended him and avenged him and was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. Yeah, right, Moses, go for it. For he suppressed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. It wasn't by Moses to be by God. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, they fought, and would have set them one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do you wrong among one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong, the guilty party, thrust him away saying who made thee a judge who made thee a ruler and a judge over us will thou kill me as thou didst the egyptian yesterday uh oh moses was a murderer then fled moses at this same moses was a fool was a, he fled he's a vagabond he's a fugitive of the law and was a stranger in the land of Midian, Madian, where he begat two sons. When he was forty year, when forty years were expired, he's eighty years old now. There appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in the bush. Yeah, right. Oh, come on, Stephen, preach it. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him. Yes, yes, that's what we want to hear. Tell us, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, not the God of Ishmael, and not the God of Esau. Stephen, you did it again. You left out those two people. So don't take all magazines you see in Iraq at their checkout center as being correct and positive. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet. Stephen knows the Bible. Where has he been wrong? And he's even told us more details and some things that we didn't even know. Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Some oriental homes, you got to take off your feet before you enter. I guess that's a holy place. Feet? Did I say feet? Yeah. Don't take off their shoes. Leave your feet. 
Well, that's a little holy ground. I mean, some people, their homes, you know, you, you can't touch nothing. It's a shrine. I've been in a house like that. My whole childhood. Things you couldn't touch. I got saved, and, and woe be forbid that we moved the knick-knack paddywhack on the coffee table for me to get saved. I heard about that the whole afternoon. Major, a new name was written down in glory. The angels rejoicing. That I got saved, and, and my grandma was upset because the knick-knack paddywhack got moved. Interesting. I have seen... I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt. And yeah, right. God's on our side. And I have heard their groanings. Yeah, God's listening. And come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee the Yay, yeah, Moses, go, brother, go, do it. Oh, Stephen, they're patting him on the back. They love him. This Moses. Yeah, right. Moses, where of the seed of Moses? Man. Stephen has got them. They're cheering him. And all he's doing is telling them the history. Whom they refused. Uh, saying, who made this a ruler and a judge? The saying that God sent to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Yeah, that's him. Yep. He brought them out, yeah, and after that he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Now do you see what Stephen is now doing? He's going to present Jesus Christ through their God, Moses. Moses is going to die, but that prophet that's going to come, you're supposed to hear him. That's what Moses said. That's what God told Moses to write down. There's going to be a prophet that's going to be likened unto you. And you better hear what he says. Stephen quotes the verse correctly. And there was even division amongst the gospel. Who say that I am? They say that prophet? Yeah, that prophet. But you didn't listen to him. This is he that was in the church of the wilderness, which the angel would speak to him in the Mount Sinai or Sinai. Oh, Israel was called a church, a gathering of people. And guess what? They had no building. Oh, they had no meeting house. Ouch. They had a bunch of people. Oh. Sticks and stones is not the church. And in this church, boy, they had a bunch of people that rebelled and, and hit the preacher and the associate preacher and their sister very hard. They gave Moses a hard time and Aaron a hard time. Even Aaron and their sister gave the preacher a hard time. This was your mega church, and boy, I tell you, Moses, he, I, I don't think Moses had any peace, but what peace God gave him. And they angered God by this me mega church often. And they angered the preacher often. Had God and Moses in this mega church ever got mad at the congregation together, ooh, that would have been it. Mega church gone. God had to calm Moses down, and Moses had to calm God down. That's interesting. This is he that was church in the wilderness, which the angels spanked to him in the Mount Sinai, with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us the Ten Commandments. Yes, right, that's right. God gave us those all. God, yeah, what you guys added, but yeah. To whom our father would not obey. Uh, shut up, Stephen. We're not happy no more. But thrust him from them 
and in their hearts turned back unto Egypt. Stephen, they're crossing the line. This is not a happy message no more. You're going to break your bounds. You're going to get us angry. Get back to the lovey dovey happy stuff, will you? Say unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as this Moses, yay, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of it. You're doing it again, Stephen. You're making us mad. You're doing good. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Oh. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, the star. As is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Ooh, now the book of Amos. I'm angry with you guys. God speaking. They're angry with Stephen now. And God is angry because they're angry at Stephen. And Stephen's telling them the truth. What lie has he told? Ye took up the, the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Riphaim. That star is what they call today the star of David. That star of David has nothing to do with Israel. It's right here. Stephen said what that star was. And Israel and Christians will not listen to what Stephen said. That's the star of Riphaim. And how many churches have the star of Riphraim in their stage? On a flag. On a flag, on the stage. When the book of the Bible of Acts tells us, by a man who lived there, told us what it was. Six-pointed star. Come on. You didn't read Revelation about the number six? It's a, it's a number of man. Where Israel is the number 12? You want a star for, I mean, you want a flag for Israel? Water turned to blood. Man's hand turned leprosy. A rod turned into a snake. Don't tread on me. It should not be a southern flag. It should be an Israelite flag. Which ye made to worship them. And I, God, will carry you away beyond Babylon. Uh-oh. Our fathers had the tabernacle of the witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. Yeah, all right, Stephen. Yeah, that tabernacle, that was sent by God, the blueprints by God. And look, the temple. Look, look, turn around, Stephen. Look at the temple. Look at it. Isn't it great? Hey! Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus. Excuse me, Stephen? Stephen! Oh! Stop! Stop for a minute. You're wrong. If you ever want to see your Bible, the King James Bible, you go to Acts 7.45 and it does not say Jesus, you got the wrong Bible. Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I lied. I apologize, Stiley Haber lied. I have seen King James Bible say Joshua. I've seen it. I've seen a man come up to me with his Bible, say King James Undercover, came up to me and said, Pastor, uh, well, not a pastor, but they called me Pastor Hayward. Uh, you said a King James Bible would say Jesus. I said, yes, sir. He says, look, I have a King James Bible. I said, yes, sir. He goes, it says Joshua. I said, no, come on. I took his Bible. I said, and looked at the cover, looked at the dedicate the, the title page, looked at the front of the Bible, looked at what it said, it said Joshua. In a King James 1611 Bible. 
You'll find this another place, Hebrews 4 8. Joshua means Jehovah saves. Jesus means Jehovah saves. So Stephen's telling us when you study the life of Joshua, you see the, the story of Jesus Christ. Joshua, I was gonna say Stephen just tell these these priests, these scribes, these elders of Israel, your book of Joshua is the book of Jesus Christ. Moses did not bring you into the promised land. He died. Jesus. No, 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 not Joshua. Jesus will bring you into the promised land. The new New Jerusalem, the new earth. The only way to get to that new earth is by Jesus. Wow. <coughs> Did Stephen say a mouthful there? And right there, I would for someone that would have been the light switch that turned off. Jesus, no, he's got it wrong. That's Joshua. <coughs> <coughs> Into the possession of the Gentiles, the Moabites. I mean, not the Moab, the Canaanites, the Hethites, the you know all the other ites in the land. That was that was that was Gentile. That was Hamites. We have now gone from Genesis. We've gone to Exodus. We're now in Joshua. We've already looked at the law. We're in Joshua now. Whom God drive out before the face of our fathers. Unto the days of David. Uh oh, now we're going to the king. What happened to King Saul? God never recognized him. That was the king that the people wanted. The king that God wanted was God himself, but I'll give you David. Now we're going to 1 Samuel. Now we're going to 1 Kings, 1 Chronicles. Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. All right, Stephen. Yes, you're back on the ball here. Look at it. Turn around. Look. There it is. There's what David wanted to do. But Solomon built him a house. And I'm like, why didn't David build a house? Oh, yeah. Okay. A little murder, a little adultery. Oh. Let's, let's, let's get that out of our history, okay? And even today, 2016, if you can find, there's a, there's a movie out there, David and Bathsheba. And they blot out the nudity, but it, there's there's a movie still making fun of David and Bathsheba, which God said to David, you, "You've caused people to mock me." The movie's out. That man, that great man of God, sleeping with a woman he shouldn't be, and killed her husband. Stephen, knock it off. Will you stop bringing up our sins? We want to hear the good parts. We don't want to hear the sinful parts. Stephen is preaching the good and the sin. If you ain't got sin in your message, you ain't got no message. But Solomon built him a house. Now it's questionable. Is that he built Solomon a house or he built God a house? Could be God, but Solomon also spent more days than he did on God's house. Remember re the recording? It said uh, it took this amount of years for God's house, and then it took longer for Solomon's house. That could be a, that that could be taken both ways for these men. Like, yeah, Solomon built the temple, but he also spent a little more time in his own house. <laughs> Stephen, knock it off. And there are people who probably sit in churches when a pre when they're invited to a church and when the preacher preaches what he's supposed to be, they probably sit in that pew saying, "Wish you knock it off. It's almost noon. Let's get out of here." How be it the Most High dwells not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Oh, he just shut that temple down. He committed the unpardonable sin amongst these priests. Even the, the, the disciple, Lord, don't you see the stones in them? Oh, yeah, but they're going to be trotted down. Remember one of the, far, the final charges they brought about Jesus? 
Yeah. He's going to destroy the temple in three days. He's going to destroy the temple in three days, build it back up. Man, they thought they were talking about that building. They thought he was going to go in there with dynamite or plastic explosions and blow the place up. But he was speaking about his own body. Heaven is my throne. Ooh. You ever think about that? And the earth, my footstool. What is Mother Earth? It's a place where God put his feet up and say, ah. Oh. Mm. That's where my feet go. You know that part of Jesus' body that you had to be washed wherever he went? You know, Jesus' feet did get dirty. I'll just put that right here in this Mother Earth, this dirty planet. I think Mercury and Venus, I think they're gas planets. Mars is a red kind of something. Saturn, I think, is a gas planet. I, just the idea of Earth is so important. God says, this is when we put my feet up there. Uh He's got the whole world in his hands. No, he's not. He's got his feet on the earth. He's got his feet on the earth. <laughs> you don't read your Bible. Pay attention to some, some of the songs you're singing and realize what the lyrics truly say. What house will you build me? Saith the Lord. And what or what is the place of my rest? Isaiah 66, 1, Matthew 5, 30. What are you going to build me? The heavens and the earth can't even contain me. You're going to build a little Baptist church that, that I'm going to show up every Sunday morning in midweek service just for you guys? Really? And some people go so far as to name their church Temple. Really? Has not my hand made all these things? So you're going to take a tree that God said, let there be trees, and cut it down, and cut it up to make something for God when it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have a tree to build. So you didn't do nothing. God provided you everything that you needed to be done to do what you wanted to do, which God made you. And if he didn't make you, you wouldn't be there. He didn't make the trees. You couldn't do what you wanted to do. So it's all God. Yeast, oh Stephen, this is not an altar call that you would do. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised and heart and ear. Wow, Stephen, you're not. They're not coming back next week. Not with a message like that. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. They're definitely not coming back. They're going to go to the People Friendly Seeker Church. As your fathers did, so did ye father like son. And you know what? Who preached that message over and over? Jesus did. So not only did they hear this message from a man that they killed, supposedly alive today, but now they're hearing it from the prophets. What they've read, the Old Testament. Now they got a man standing up listening to that is in their council, quoting the Old Testament scriptures that they know of, nailing them down as you are no different from your fathers. That's why Stephen ran the whole history. The whole history of Israel is you failed, you failed, you failed, you failed, you failed. They saw, yay, 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 yay. Look at that. Yeah, Moses, Abraham, yay. And Stephen says, no, no, no. If there's one thing you are to learn from our fathers, they're wicked and they're sinners and they disobeyed God. You too. Which of the prophets had not your fathers persecuted? Ooh. And they have slain them with, which showed before of the coming of the just one. They told us those prophets said that Messiah is coming and you, your fathers, killed them.
How long has the collection plate already been passed? You forget it now. They ain't put no money in the collection. So Stephen's now told us the Old Testament. Give us the history of the Old Testament. The Old Testament said that Jesus Christ was coming. Did you get that? Notice how he says just one. You know what that runs back you to? Pilate. Pilate says, I found no fault in him. That means you're just. What would you have me to do? Barabbas. Wait a minute. Barabbas was the guilty one. The just one is what the one you want to crucify. What shall I do if Jesus is called Christ, which is called the king? Crucify. Wait a minute. Pilate's already told you he's just. Just means you stand right in the eyes of judge. And your prophets, your Old Testament, which I just gave you the Reader's Digest version, said that that just one would come. And he has come. And guess what you did to him? Exactly what your fathers would do to him. And remember that one parable that as a family read tonight? The guy goes out, he plants a vineyard, he sends out the, 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 to the husbandman to take care of it, he sends out the servant. Hey, I need some fruit. They kill him. I need some fruit. They beat him and send him empty. I need some fruit. They, they mistreated him and sent him back. I'm going to send my son. And the end of that, that parable that Jesus spoke, the ones that are guilty said he spoke about us. Stephen says, yes. You remember that? It's you. We need more Stevens. We need more Stevens if you want to see a revival. Problem is, Stephen did not get a revival. Only after his death did we get a revival. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Plural. Not just Jesus. Who had received the law by the dispensation of angels. Well, look at that. The law came by angels. Thank you, Stephen. That's, that's an interesting footnote. Jesus. The law says that you and your disciples are supposed to wash your hands. You didn't wash your hands. What are you guys doing picking up the grain of corn? You're not supposed to do that. On the Don't you heal that guy. The, the law said. You're guilty, Jesus. And your disciples. And Stephen comes up and says, you have not kept it. And Jesus already told him, said, listen, the traditions of you, of men, but not the traditions in the law of God. Stephen is hacking these guys by what Jesus already hacked them by. Now, I don't know if Stephen was there in the life of Jesus Christ. But he is sure backing what Jesus told these guys. And God is sending Stephen to these men of Israel. I'm warning you. If you don't get right and repent, you're going to hell. I'm going to was loud. Sorry. Just a personal thing here. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And we saw that expression earlier in chapter 5, verse 33. Cut to the heart. This is not the good cut to the heart. They're angry. They're not going to repent. They're not going to get right. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. That's what Jesus says they do in hell. They gnash their teeth. They are chewing the pastor out literally. It is Stephen bubblegum time. But he, Stephen being full of the Holy Ghost. Look at that's all this. It's still, he's full of the He has not lost any of the Holy Ghost. Looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. Now, watch this. Watch this. What these men do will change the history of Israel 
for thousands of years, I can say safely. Jesus standing on the right hand of, the, of God. You know what would happen if these men would receive Stephen as preaching? Jesus would have came. He's standing. History would have been rewritten by Stephen's history message. You really believe that? Yes, I do. The free will of man is Jesus standing. Man, they receive Stephen his words. I'm coming. It's a free will. God already knew they would reject, but he's standing and like, if they do, if they do, I'm coming. You realize Jesus has got to be standing before he gets on that horse? He's not going to float on a chair. He's not going to be sitting on a saddle, floating on a horse. On the right hand of God. That's where he went in Acts 1. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open. Rapture. And the Son of Man stand. The Son of Man. That's Jesus. When you read the Son of Man in the Gospel, especially Luke, that's Jesus. Stephen told you. On the right hand of God. He's coming. Stephen's last message, his last words are, he's coming. And we're so early in the book of Acts. And they're preaching Jesus is coming. That's what the angels told the disciples in Acts 1. As you see him go up, so shall he come. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord. And cast him out of the city. And stoned him. Had the prophecy of Jesus said not a bone of him been broken, that's exactly what would happen to Jesus. It's almost like Stephen, I don't know how to say it, but the second Jesus, the second chance. Jesus planted. Stephen has watered. And nothing fruitful is going to come up in the nation of Israel for thousands of years. And stone them. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet. What was that rich young Euler's adjective in the Gospels? He said, Lord, I... I I've honored my parents, <coughs> not committed adultery, I've not lied, I've not stealed. The one thing thou lackest, what's that? You're rich, go sell that thou have, give it to the poor. What, what, what's the adjective of that man, the rich, young? That could have been Paul. I'm not saying it is, but they laid their clothes at a young man's feet. Now that's interesting, why not just a man's feet? Whose name was Saul. Dum, 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 dum. Now we come into the man of Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. God loves his children, doesn't he? It looks like it took a long time for them to kill Stephen by stoning. He has enough time to say, I see Jesus standing. He has enough time to say, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He reversed Jesus. Jesus said first, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then Jesus said, Lord, God, Father, receive my spirit. 
see, man, we think of ourselves first. That, that's our nature. Look, that's what we are. Us first. And when he had thus, when he had said this, look what the Bible says. He fell asleep. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4.13, 1 Corinthians 15.59. People who are in the Lord don't die. Your grandma saved, you don't say, well, we lost grandma. You say that about someone who's, who's lost. Don't say, don't come up with a testimony and say, oh, my mom, she's saved, she's wonderful, all that. Uh, how's your mom doing? Oh, we lost her. <coughs> no, she's asleep. Lazarus was asleep. But we go to see him. Well, you know, Lord, it does good that uh, Lazarus is dead. So, you ever wonder why they put padding and pillows and blankets in a coffin? Because the Bible says they sleep. Other than that, it's just a piece of junk that you pay more money for. I've been through that. You have to pay for that junk. I asked not to. I asked for just a wooden box. They can't do that no more. You got to put pillows and all that other in there. Because the Bible says you can't escape from the Bible. They're sleeping. That's why they need a pillow. Isn't that remarkable? 